and uh, I think this one is last but not least. This is Sheikh Mohammed giving a warning to social media users, which I did speak about in the previous video. But here I'll give you the five points, six points that he speaks about. Okay, so what should, uh, Sheikh Mohammed said about social media users? Number one is officials should be at the field, not in conferences, which was I just spoke about. You know, that's all bullshit. People will only be in the offices. Only when Sheikh Mohammed is going to visit, they'll show, oh, I'm working hard, I'm working hard. But when he, it's not there, he'll be like, hey, my assistant, you work hard. Okay. The second thing is, he says, don't tarnish UAE's image on social media. Now, I know why he's trying to say that, because obviously they don't want to stir the pot and encourage others or give them others the courage to talk negative of the country. Because if it does, then... You, it's only going to escalate and it's only going to become worse. And that might give rise to the Arab uprising, which all the Middle East countries are afraid of. Okay. Whichever country an Arab uprising has taken place, that country has ended up being destroyed. It is Egypt. You could say Syria. You could say Iraq. Wherever there's been an Arab uprising or United States has intervened or they have brought in democracy, it's just destroyed the country. Okay. So they just want to ensure damage control. Now, what I personally look at it as um, acting or putting on an act that everything is perfect is foolish. There's no country that's perfect. Every country has flaws. Every human being has flaws. So just trying to portray a very beautiful picture online will actually bring in more curiosity, will bring in more curious eyes. And that is why UAE has been in the spotlight. Because people are just, you know, they're like tired of this perfect image of the erection that is Burj Khalifa, that building and right in the middle of Dubai and the perfect shopping malls and the perfect life. There's, there are a lot of voices that have been silenced and they're waiting to explode and come out. And, you know, that's what it is. So he might say, don't tarnish the image of UAE. Uh, there's nothing to tarnish. You're, you're just hiding the reality from coming out and you can't hide it anymore. In the day of internet, in the day of social media, in the day and age that is today, it's impossible to keep this facade anymore. Okay. Next one, he says, emeritization is the top priority of UAE. The reason why they're saying this is because now there are a lot of Arab locals, Emiratis, who are without jobs and they are angry. They are really pissed off. Now, it's a double-edged sword because on one hand, the UAE government has pampered the UAE citizens by giving them five times the salary or ten times the salary plus salary bonus plus free housing, free electricity, free water, free education, free this, free that, free banking loans. So they have pampered them to the point where they made life, they had made life very easy. Today, the treasury is empty. They're no longer able to sustain this. So that is why uh, there are no more vacancies in the government sector. And obviously the population is increasing and, you know, there are people, they have to lay off jobs and all that. So now these guys are without jobs. So where do they get them jobs if there are no jobs in the public sector? Well, obviously private sector. But now private sector, they cannot match these salaries. They cannot match the uh, packages. They cannot match all the benefits, the perks. And in the government sector, you can work six hours and go home and relax. In the private sector, you have to work like fucking dogs. And when you have expats who are paying their hard-earned money, they want people who have fear of losing their jobs and they work like dogs. But you seriously think an expat can scare an Arab local? No, they can't. Because the citizens are protected to the point where they have ignorance and arrogance of the gods. So that is why an Arab local, when he's employed by, let's say, an expat, it's more like a fuck you, you know, it's like, uh, don't fuck around with me. Better give my salary on time. I'll not come on time. What the fuck you'll do? It's my country. I'll complain to labor, block your company, get it blacklisted. So people are afraid of employing Emiratis. They just don't want. It's a fucking liability to have them. However, you can't say this. So what do you do? You just maybe employ a guy who's just stamps and uh, comes there and, you know, you just take it as, okay, we'll just look at this as a, uh, loss and just keep quiet just close our eyes think we are giving tax so now this is where sheikh mohammed no matter which leader comes from sheikh mohammed sheikh zayed or another hundred sheikh mohammeds 
Emeritization can never become a reality. Never ever become a reality. You can force a few companies, but they'll end up being bankrupt or they'll end up bleeding losses and the companies will sell down. You make Arab locals work. Make the market competitive. Make them work the same fucking salaries like everyone else. Fine. They don't work the same fucking salaries. They want five to ten times more. They want to work maybe 10% of what people work. They don't want to go out in the sun. They want an easy life. They bully other people. Uh, and you expect uh, private companies which are struggling uh, to employ them. And then you also have the fact that, you know, this is not your country. You don't get citizenship. There's no future. So people think, why should I invest hardened money here? I'll send it back home. So that's why all these factors put together, emeritization is never going to be a reality. So he can say it's UAE's top priority only because he wants to calm the citizens down from having a civil unrest, which is, I'm telling you, it's it's so possible because you see in all these countries uh, what these citizens do. But here again, if the citizens were to cause the civil unrest, I'll tell you, it'll destroy the fucking country. Why? Because... As long as there is this dictator or there is this iron hand that rules the country, the country will be okay. Case in point, Saddam Hussein. When Saddam Hussein ruled Iraq, even if he was a dictator, there was law and order in that country. Things were moving okay. Yes, he was killing people who were fucking idiots, but the country was okay. Today, look at Iraq. A fucking disaster. Absolute fucking disaster. People are unemployed in scales. You have graduates who are just lying down... Uh, protesting outside government offices and sleeping in the sun because they're just protesting. They don't have fucking jobs. So as long as they have this dictator kind of format, it'll work. Because these citizens, these pampered Arab Muslims, I'll say luxury, think, oh, futuristic. They don't know jack shit. So I'm in support of what Sheikh Mohammed is doing. I'm in support of how the system runs. And I seriously think that these citizens are a liability. They need to, that is why I'll, I'll challenge you, open challenge. None of these locals, none, not a single fucking one of them would be employed globally. They will never get a fucking job. They will never get a salary. They will never be fucking employed. The only place they'll get a job is in UAE. That's Emiratis or Saudi nationals will only be employed in Saudi. Um, UAE locals will be employed only there. These countries, the locals only... It's, it's like a frog in the well. They'll only be employed by their particular country, nowhere else. Okay? You can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm open to what you have to say. Then he says, we need more projects to drive our economy at the top. No, you don't need more projects. You have had enough and more projects, enough and more houses, enough and more this thing. All are lying abandoned. Um, you don't have buyers. What are you going to do with more projects? Now, the reason why I think more projects is because that's the only way the country runs. Tourism is being affected. You hardly have any oil left. You're not making any revenue there. So the only lifeline is, oh, announce this project, announce that project. But here's the thing. How many more buildings can you open? How many more flats can you uh, rent out? How many more villas can you create? There are no buyers. And people have lost faith in you because you cheated them. You took their money. You didn't deliver the projects. You give them hidden charges. You make sure that people invested in their country. You didn't give them any rights. People had enough for the last 10 years. And they have realized that you can change. You will flip the switch whenever you want. So when times are good, you fucked everyone. When times are bad, you double fucked everyone. Or 10 times fucked everyone. Sorry, people are not going to come again because these horror stories are going to remain. Earning money is not easy. Spending money is very easy. And it's not... You know, every single day I get another new email. Bro, I've lost this money. Oh, I've been scammed. In fact, later on during my video, you'll hear about the scams. So many people have lost millions. It's hard in money. So the horror stories they will share with millions of other people spread like wildfire. And nobody's going to buy it. So even if you create new, more projects, nobody's going to buy them. And you already have existing projects that nobody's buying. You're going to drive the economy to the dust if you create any more projects. You better handle what you have. That's what I'd say. Number five is he says, government departments should not ignore complaints from the public. Uh, well, uh, the complaints from the public is uh, it's never ending. You're not able to handle it. But the reason why you say it is because you want to show that you care, which I understand totally. So 
uh, well, you'll not ignore the complaints of public. At the same time, you'll not allow them to voice their complaints in the public forum on social media. If they have to complain, they have to do it privately. So that's once again, you know, clashes. And last, if not the least, the future is bright. Uh, obviously, you'll say the future is bright. I don't think any leader or any CEO is going to say, oh, the future is bleak. Oh, we are going to have mass unemployment and we are going to, you know, we're going to have a tough time ahead. Obviously, you'll say that. So these are my thoughts on Sheikh Mohammed's six major big announcements. Let me know what you think. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? I'm very open to what you have to say. Next, we'll move on to business news, starting with the UAE.